One of the great blessings of all of our careers, and I'm talking about our panel here, is that we've never had to tell a patient, you have polio. That wasn't always the case. Back in 1879, it all started when British physician Michael Underwood, he noticed some peculiar symptoms in one of his patients. And those symptoms turned out to be what we now know to be polio. So what is polio? Well, polio can come in a couple of different forms. There's non-paralytic polio where you may be infected, but you really get no symptoms other than headaches, fatigues, fevers. You may have vomiting, sore throat. In less than 5% of cases, you can develop something known as paralytic polio. This is polio as we know it, where it affects your spine and potentially your brain stem. Now, some forms of polio, bulbar, it affects the brain stem. Other forms affect the spine, and some affect both the brain stem and the spine. Why is that a big problem? Because areas that are affected, and it can be any area of the spine potentially, you develop muscle spasms, flaccid paralysis. In some circumstances, you can develop complete paralysis, or maybe it affects one side of the body or the other. Now, the reason we don't talk about this much on the show is quite simply because we've done one heck of a job. But it wasn't always this way. Back in 1894, we found out in America how bad polio could be. 132 cases were found in Vermont. Let's move forward to 1916. In New York City, they experienced the first large polio epidemic. 6,000 plus people died. 1921, we all know our president was affected. Franklin Delano Roosevelt contracted polio at the age of 39, spent the rest of his years in a wheelchair. Now, this is the gravity of the virus. Imagine getting the virus, spending the rest of your life in the iron lung. This was needed to aid in respiration. Patients would literally spend the rest of their life in the iron lung because there was no cure, no vaccine, until 1955, Dr. Jonas Salk developed an injectable, an injectable inactivated polio vaccine that was first administered in the US and Canada. Here's the good news. 1957, the miracle began. The incidence of polio began to fall up to 90% after the start of vaccination to the point where in 1988, the US pretty much didn't see any more epidemics. Whereas in 125 other countries, polio still existed. 350,000 cases still worldwide. But that brings us to today. Thanks to all those humanitarian efforts, the number of countries affected stands at three. Quite amazing. Afghanistan, Nigeria, and Pakistan. And here's the reality. We're hoping that by 19, or we're hoping that by the year 2018, due to vaccination efforts, polio may be eradicated worldwide. Oh, which is just awesome. I mean, if you, you know, if this was back in 1950, families would be kind of brace, be bracing for another summer of polio terror. And I, I, you it, it was exactly that. And I remember talking to my mom about this. She lived in terror because I, I was a young kid in the 50s. Mm -hmm. I, in fact, was, got the polio vaccine the first year that it was available in 1955. In my mother's mind, there was no discussion. There was no thought, oh, is this vaccine proven, et cetera. Mm -hmm. It was, you're getting the vaccine right. because it was that big a deal. This True kind of remarkable. piece of medical technology is just, it's just probably the biggest thing in pediatrics or even medicine mm -hmm. in the last 100 years. And, you know, we still essentially use the same vaccine that Dr. Salk developed 57 years ago. And we give it to kids at age two, four, and six months, and then one booster before they go to kindergarten. And, um, you know, and, and once we get rid of polio, they can, we can use the same kind of mechanism and, and plan to start getting rid of some of these other things too.